Hey, Huckster here. Let's talk about translations, Bible translations. I think they cause an enormous amount of problems. Got a comment this morning on one of my videos, and it simply uh, said 2 Corinthians 11.14. Uh, Satan would come into the church as an angel of light. Translations. That word Satan there is adversary. The same word used when Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan, talking to Peter. Peter at that moment was Jesus' adversary. The adversary in that first century was those Judaizers, those that were opposing Jesus and his followers. That was the Satan. That was the adversary. And it said they would become as angels of light. And that word angels is anglos, which means messengers. In Second Peter, Peter warns of false prophets that would come in among us, or among them, teaching heresies and being against Jesus himself. Those were the adversaries appearing to be angels of light. When the seed was being planted, they came along behind those Judaizers and changed that message. But because of bad translations, people have it as a supernatural being that appears in the church as an angel of light. You know, I watched uh, Jack Van Impey this morning, and he's talking about Muslims. He's he's talking about how uh, they say become Muslims or else, and says Christians don't do that. Well, what is, what are Christians doing? They're saying, either you follow Jesus or else you'll be thrown into a lake of fire to burn for eternity. No difference in the, the message that the Muslims are given other than the Muslims are making it. Uh, you either become a Muslim or else we behead you or whatever. And these are radical Muslims. All Muslims don't do this. But Christians say, you either become a Christian or else you will burn for eternity in a fire. Because of bad translations, you have preachers like this. Who would want to believe in a system that gives you no choice? The same as I wouldn't want to become a Muslim a lot of people don't want to become Christians because of those teachings. And, you know, most Christians will tell you how, oh, well, I'm doing great because I'm blessed by God. And God is behind me on doing this and behind me on doing that. And God talks to these people, so they say. You know, there's one right now that's doing uh, barbecue practice every weekend, and I don't know what he's doing with all that meat, but on the first weekend, he said he threw it away. 65 pounds. Now, it takes 5 pounds of, of grain to produce 1 pound of meat, to feed a hog to get it up to size, to feed a cow to get it up to size, to feed chickens to get them up to size. It takes five pounds of grain to produce one pound of meat. Every day in this world, over 20,000 children die of starvation or curable diseases that usually come about because of their uh, poor nutrition. That five pounds of grain 
to produce one pound of meat, and this guy said he cooked 65 pounds of it. You do the math, 5 times 65, that's a lot of pounds of grain that would feed a lot of people. But yes, they say Jesus has blessed them and is, is behind them on, on this endeavor to play barbecue. They're not, they're not doing it to feed themselves. They're doing it as a hobby. You know, and the, and the world food dis- distribution is, is so off. You know, you've got farmers in, in South America and, and other countries that can barely eat. They're the poorest people in the world, yet they produce the food that produces the grain that feeds the beef or feeds the meat to feed the rich. It just doesn't make any sense. And I'm not against meat eating. You know, if you do it in moderation, if you understand the numbers that are out there, the number of people that are starving daily, that could survive off grain. But most of the grain goes to feed the meat. And they say God's behind them on this kind of stuff. They they tell you of all these miracles that Jesus has shown them and it usually goes against common sense. And they they say, well, you know, they're blessed and they're going to live in a mansion in heaven and they'll point to most everybody else and say they're going to burn in a fire in hell for eternity. All this because of bad translations and, and it's not only just bad translations. These people lap this stuff up. They love the fact that what they call their enemies, anybody that disagrees with them, is going to burn for eternity. They're vengeful. And they say Jesus is going to do it. Not them, but Jesus. They, They bring out these heresies against our Lord and Savior. Making Him worse than any Muslim. And they're comfortable with saying these things because they say, hey, my Bible says it, so it's true. You know, the, the Bible says gain knowledge, study to find yourself approved. And just because you go in there and read a translation that you know came along 1,600 years after the fact, and and you just say, hey, this is true, end of story. That makes you very unwise, very unlearned, very unstudied, showing yourself approved. Translations, lack of study, and a belief that God is behind you no matter what you do. And He tells you these things secretly and privately. And then you spread it on to others. I think that goes back to Second Peter when he's talking about the false teachers and Satan appearing as an angel of light, deceiving. Peace, love, justice, understanding, music, and friends.